Hey, what's up, everybody? It's DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Yo, just wanted to give you a quick video um, of some features in FL Studio 20. And if you want to, you can follow me at Twitter at DJ Fanatic. That's DJ P H A N A T I C, as well as uh, Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats, spelled the same way. So I uh, just wanted to show you a quick video of basically something that can help your workflow out. Uh, I thought this is really cool. This is in the FL Studio tw Update version 20, and I thought it was dope. And uh, I took it for granted, basically. And it's a quick feature that you can access. Uh, it's basically arranging your transport controls, basically your whole status bar up here. Uh, you can arrange it to any way that you like. And I know a lot of times you have all these different icons and all these different controls at the top. And sometimes you just don't need all that stuff. And it's a bit overwhelming when you look at it, especially when you start out with FL uh, Studio, if you're new to it. Um, I thought it was a little overwhelming when I started. So uh, just to arrange it. And basically, it helps your workflow, too, because you want to be able to get to key things quickly uh, that you use instead of being having other stuff up here that you don't need. Um, don't need, but not not saying that you don't need, but that you're not interested in. So what you can do, um, all you do is right click anywhere in the top here in this control area and you just right click and you go to edit. But they do have um, factory presets that I thought were kind of cool that they made for you. Uh, for instance, compact. So you have a nice clean um, control area here um, you know you got your main controls your main options and of course the default FL 12 this is what I've been using for a minute and when you update I think it automatically goes to this uh, of course uh, you have your default hint hint above menu so you got this up here this is the hint panel as you hover, you see different things, you know, your multi-link to controllers, all this other wait for input to start playing, metronome and all that. And basically anywhere in FL Studio, you don't know what it is, it'll show up here, mostly up here in this area. So that is very useful. I'll show you some other ones. Uh, you can actually have your default Mac OS set up on a PC. I'm doing this video on a PC, and this is the default Mac setup. And if you didn't know that FL Studio 20 version, uh, version 20, I don't know why I keep saying that backwards, but this is now compatible with Mac. So you're using a Mac, I'm sure this will load up as the Mac default. Uh, you also have your standard default. You know, you have that. And visually, you know, you can set this up visually, but it's mainly for workflow. You know, uh, some people like the compact where you don't have to see all that stuff uh, single line centered so you kind of see what controls what options parameters are here and just a single line if you like a clean look and you can just use these right here so I usually you know, I like to see everything so I have access to it um, I usually just keep it on the uh, default FL 12 or I can just do default. But the other thing I thought was cool is you can actually, uh, let me go to a preset. You can create your own presets. So this is something I saved before I hit record and um, before I record this video. And what you can do, you go to edit, and now you can kind of build your own, you know, control area. Um, I forgot what they call it. Basically, it's like a control panel. Um, you can drag your like one click audio. Let's say I want that right here next to copy and drag. Or maybe I want copy and drag on this side and save here in my upper left. Maybe I want the online panel like right here on the left. And I want, let's see, a, a key modifier. There's some shortcuts where you use control, whatever. And I can actually put these up here. So I thought that was really cool. And, you know, your plugin picker, wherever it went. <laughs> but you get the idea. You can build this. It's auto-saved. Um, 
you know, you can, it's auto save, or you can save preset as another preset. So and then you hit close, and there's your new, you know what I'm saying, your new um, setting. So I think you can only put the plug and picker to the right. I'm not sure why I did that. But you get the idea with, you know, what you can do. Remember, it's right click, edit. Um, sometimes I was clicking left click and I was having trouble finding it. So it's definitely right click. Where's my plugin picker? Uh, is a reason why it's doing that. But you get the idea. Um, let's see. Renders audio file. What else I would like to put up there? Metronome. It's a constant thing you use a lot. Uh, let's say I want metronome. See, I don't know why it does that. Oh, it's because of the, okay, I know why. So you get the idea. You can edit your own panel. I'm going to take that back to actually right-click. See how I'm used to left-clicking? Just to default and have everything up there. Um, also, another thing I wanted to cover, uh, just real quick, I thought it was really good because I tend to forget about this. Um, F5 brings you to this playlist area. Um, and also, if you hit F5 again, it'll take you to the mixer. So basically, I think it's F7 takes you to piano roll. And if you hit it again, it'll go back to whatever the last window was, which is the playlist window. F8 is your plugin picker. You get all to your plugins and effects. And you notice I have a lot. <laughs> um, F6 is the channel rack, which you use a lot in FL Studio. And, you know, so you hit F6 or whatever. Again, it'll open whatever last windows in the back you hit f5 again it open whatever last windows in the back so it's a quick way to get to these windows without having to click on these um you know on these buttons so when you're in the groove you know making your music you can get to these windows faster by using your function keys so yeah that's just a, a quick way to you know get to your workflow uh, improve your workflow and also um a quick way of organizing how you want whatever parameters you want access to quicker. Uh, the last thing I was going to show you is something I definitely take for granted and I was just kind of exploring and I definitely recommend you exploring in the program that you use and and also this type of um, organizing this to different settings I mean different um, factory presets like compact or whatever uh, most DAWs have that option. Uh, you just have to kind of dig a little bit and, and locate it. Um, it's usually under view. If you go to view, let me see, view, and you can view a bunch of things. But usually it's under view or, or layout. And you can lay out your um, control panel here and, you know, to whatever liking that you use. That way your workflow basically improves your your creativity because the program basically is to bring out what you want to create and you um, running into a technical roadblock where you don't have access to this channel rack immediately you're halting that forward momentum of creativity so it's definitely important you know to have all the tools that you want or the way that you like it and based on the way that um, you produce so um, the other thing I was going to show you before I forget is under file. Uh, when you're creating a new uh, pattern, uh, a new project in the FL Studio, um, they always had this, but they, I noticed they added some more. If you go under file, new from template, there's a lot of different templates that you can choose from, which I thought was dope. Um, you know, there's a basic one with the limiter. You get a kick, clap, hi-hat, and snare, and a minimal template includes a limiter on the master. I don't use that um, because, you know, there are sounds, I use different sounds, I don't really, I mean, it's good to get an idea out, or if you're just starting out, you just want to make something, you know, you can use their sounds, but I definitely, uh, you know, recommend getting some quality drums and, and quality sounds that are aftermarket. These are built in, uh, which some actually are dope, and you can also you know mix them and add effects where they come out to be something totally different uh, you have your basic same as above without the limiter um, club basic with limiter a kick clap hi-hat and snare and a minimal template includes a limiter on the master output 
Um, a club basic, same as above. Delay and reverb. A delay and reverb on separate send tracks. That's dope. Um, that's especially if you're like doing uh, vocals, that may be good for you. If you're recording and mixing vocals. Uh, empty with four sends. An empty template with four send tracks pre-routed to the mixer. I actually use this um, setting as well because I like the sends um, for my mixing purposes for with certain sounds that I use. And of course, an empty template to start your project from nothing. And when you open these, let's just click on this. Hopefully the video won't cut off on me. Uh, I didn't make many changes, so I'll hit no. And let's say I open that and you go to the mixer. Remember your function keys. I believe that's F F5 would take me to the mixer with the playlist. Oh. Uh, notice there's four sends here and you can route any of these tracks. See, they're already pre-routed and you can, you know, apply how much, let's say this was reverb or whatever, you can apply how much to each track. Um, so yeah, it's cool. You can just um, look at the other templates. Uh, they have other, all MIDI CC, all MIDI CC on MIDI channel one would be sent to the current selected FL channel. This is like when you want to route MIDI to one channel and you just, it can get confusing. Um, blocks emulate the workflow of legacy pattern blocks. Uh, 16 channels for immediate MIDI control. That's the, this template is used for by the plugin version of FL Studio. Um, and a lot of people use FL Studio for performance as well. So there's different performance setups you can do. Um, for instance, look at this. Machine, native instruments machine slash micro performance template. So a lot of these performance areas, I mean performance templates are really good to use this software uh, other than just making beats in it. And I've been taking them for granted. I thought it was really powerful. The Korg Pad Control Performance Template. Um, I'm not sure what this looks like actually. Let me just click on it. No, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, I got you. Now notice they have sounds already built in. And they're routed way over to this. Which looks like it's a send of some sort. And if I go to the uh, playlist area, looks like they have a template routed just for uh, the machine. So if you use the machine hardware, you know, this is definitely something you would consider uh, when you're producing to use these type of templates that help. Um, just to go back into the templates, if you go under advanced, they had some crazy advanced uh, templates that I thought were kind of dope, um, especially when you make certain type of music. Uh, you got drum and bass, dubstep, EDM, electro, trap. Uh, this trap, I believe, is like the house trap. It's not because um, I did select on it. But it gives a little breakdown, as you can see, under each title, uh, what each template is. So this is the FL Studio Trap template. Pretty much everything you need to start producing trap. This includes mixer routing with the mixer part on the right mixer dock and the mastering part on the left mixer dock. Placeholder channels, color coding, and many more, many other production tools. So, yeah. So they're looking out. Uh, let me use my. Woo! Look at that. So basically, they color coded all the tracks for you. And what's cool about this, see, they have the mixer broken down as well. So what's cool about this, you can take these templates and save as, and you pretty much have all the routing done for you. And you can use these templates to your advantage and have your own setup or deviate from the template. So it makes it your workflow um, really advanced. Uh, these are advanced setups. I don't want to like totally get into the details of what they did here, but that just gives you an idea of um, you know uh, the different setups of what you can do when you start a new project, and also this control area and a quick way of getting to the windows with your function keys. So hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, I know it was a lot. Just wanted to cover those three things. And uh, hopefully, you know, you learned something. I didn't confuse you or nothing. But, yeah, um, once again, it's DJ Fanatic Beats. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter at DJ Fanatic. 
uh, or Instagram at DJ Fanatic Beats, and that's spelled P H A N A T I C. And this has uh, been for uh, LiveOffBeats.com. All right, y'all. Keep making great music. Peace.